bleeding can happen pretty commonly after injuries in dogs and cats. And we're gonna go through the things that you can do to help control that bleeding, but remember, before approaching an animal that's been injured, ensure the safety of the scene and make sure you're going to be safe before approaching the animal. Also, if an injury has occurred, there's a good chance your pet will be in pain. So you wanna make sure that you place a muzzle before doing anything to try to move or help your pet. Now, Quinn is pretty good and he's also not injured, so we're gonna leave that off for this scene. There are three types of bleeding that can occur following an injury. The most minor is capillary or surface bleeding, and this occurs when just the uppermost layer of skin, of skin has been damaged. Moving on to venous bleeding, which is usually from deeper wounds, and this is a lot more blood that you're gonna see. And finally, arterial bleeding, where blood will actually be spurting, and this is the most severe and most life-threatening type of bleeding. Now, with superficial or shallow wounds where you're only seeing surface or capillary bleeding, what you wanna do is grab some of your gauze from your first aid kit, and apply firm pressure directly to the wound. You wanna hold that in place for a good five minutes, resisting the urge to lift up and peek. You wanna leave it in place for that full five minutes. After that, gently lift up on the gauze, being sure not to wipe away at it, because you can literally wipe away a clot that's forming. Now, if you, if you inspect it and the bleeding has stopped, you can move on and start with some wound care. If it's still bleeding, however, apply more gauze and more pressure. You can do that two more times, but if after three attempts at controlling the bleeding with this method, your pet is still bleeding from the area, you're gonna to wanna to transport him to your veterinarian and they can help you get it controlled from there. Now with more severe bleeding or venous bleeding, you're gonna see oozing of a larger amount of blood. You're gonna treat it the same way, however. So grabbing some gauze and applying firm pressure. Now with this much blood, you may see that these gauze squares are starting to soak through with blood. And if that happens, don't remove the gauze, simply add more, okay? So as the gauze squares become soaked through with blood, keep adding more and applying that pressure. You may end up with a pretty good sized mound of gauze and that's okay. If you need to, or you run out of gauze, you can always add a dish towel or something else to apply that pressure. And then you're gonna to wanna to try to secure it in place using some roll gauze and other bandage material so that you can then transport your pet to the veterinarian and they can help you get control of the bleeding from there. Now the final type of bleeding is arterial bleeding. And again, this is pulsating or spurting blood. You're gonna treat it initially the same way by applying firm pressure with your gauze. But if the wound happens to be on an extremity, on a, on a limb, you might be able to apply a tourniquet. So again, if the wound is here, but it's still bleeding and it's spurting, I can grab my roll gauze, wrap it around the leg above or closer to the heart from where the wound is, and I'm gonna tie that down. So make my knot, tie that firmly in place, pretty tight, and hopefully that will reduce some of the, the bleeding. Now, it is going to stop blood flows to some of the other tissues, so it can cause problems. If it's gonna take longer than 10 minutes to get your pet to a veterinarian after placing a tourniquet, about every 10 minutes or so, you need to loosen it slightly and then retighten it to allow a little bit of blood flow to come through to those other tissues. Again, with the minor wounds, you can move on to wound care, but for venous and arterial bleeding, you're going to wanna to transport your pet to the veterinarian so that they can help you get the wound under control from there.